There we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Comics Workshop. It's day three of Comics Camp. Coming to you from MerrickBennett.com. I'm Merrick Bennett doing Comics Workshop here. Thank you this week, especially to uh, Children's Literacy Foundation for helping us do these live draws all week. And thanks to my patrons over on the Patreon. Check in over there and see what we've been up to. Cool. So I am reading today on this rainy day. I'm reading some haikus by Basho. And I thought we'd draw one of them out and see what happens when we put it on the page. So Basho was a, um, a Japanese poet in the 1600s. He travels all around Japan and he um, writes what he sees. And um, I find some of these haikus really amazing. So I wrote one out for us. So we'll give it a try here and see what happens when we turn it into a page of comics. And it's about leaves and rain. So it's perfect for today. I have some leaves here at my desk to keep, it, to keep us company as we draw. All right. The spring rain must have penetrated through the leaves to feed the crystal spring. Basho, walking around Japan in the 1600s. So I'm going to turn this into a page of comics. Um, I, I find that when I draw the poem, it actually helps me engage with the words, really, in, in different ways. So let's see what happens. We'll bring it to life on the page. You know what? I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm gonna to try a tall page. I've been drawing wide pages all week. I'm gonna turn my paper and make it tall. You can draw along with me or you can do your own version of this poem, or you can try this with, uh, with your own poem at home. Um, so the first thing we always do with our pages is I'm gonna pencil in that frame around the outside. I'll carefully, carefully trace a little line around all four edges of the paper. There we go. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And I always say you can use a ruler if you want, but the important thing is that you have a little distance between your artwork and the edge of the page. That's the distance where um, that's like a, a little danger zone. Anything out there might get trimmed off if you use this page in a book. All right. So I've got my poem and today we were going to do three panel pages. So just to keep it simple, I'm going to take this page and divide it into three boxes. I'll just draw a line for the top part. We'll have a middle part and a bottom part. There you go, three panels right there. If you're doing a wide page, I guess they could be side-by-side -side panels, couldn't they? Um, we're gonna keep it super simple today and just do three like that. And then, of course, I realized after I wrote this down, it's not really a three-line haiku, is it? It's a four-line poem. So, um, because these two middle lines are about the leaves, the rain going through the leaves, I'm putting them together. I'm just gonna make a big panel in the middle. So we can move that line up a little bit and we'll move this line down. Actually, you know what that looks like to me? That looks like a little space between those panels. What if we try, this is a nice little gutter we call that. If we erase these lines, that looks like two separate boxes, right? And then if we erase this line here and this line here, it's now three separate boxes with a little space between them. And that's gonna let us play on the page. We'll bring our poem in here. So I think in honor of Basho, who was writing in ink, I'm gonna try something different today. I'm gonna set my pencil aside and I'm gonna go in with my inking tools and just do this directly in ink. Let's see what happens. I may make some mistakes. I may have to patch them over, who knows, but I'll try it in ink. It'll look a lot clearer when we're done and I won't have to take the extra time to ink it. So you can keep drawing in pencil if you want, like we've been doing all week. I'm gonna go directly to ink. So I'll bring my first line in here. I'm gonna write the line in and leave plenty of room for the artwork that we're gonna put around it. So our first line is, I'm gonna go to all caps just so it's easier to read. I'll make it nice and big. I'm putting it pretty much in the center, right in the middle of the panel. You can put it anywhere on the panel, but let's keep in mind that readers are going to read this top panel and move down the page. They're also going to read across each panel. So they'll come to this one and read across. So we can use that. We're gonna have them reading across. It's like a one long reading experience. 
if you think of it that way. Panels on the page going down, reading across. So the spring rain must have penetrated. That's a long one, but I'm going to put it under the spring rain in this panel. Must have. I'm lettering carefully, especially since I'm doing this in ink. I should not be talking as I letter in ink. Don't try this at home, folks. You might want to do your um, lettering in pencil. I just want to be able to see it really clearly on the camera here. Must have penetrated through the leaves. I'm coming down. I'm going to put through the leaves at the bottom of this panel so it'll read down. Oh, it'll be like rain falling right down the page. Must have penetrated through the leaves. Maybe I'll, I, I can get creative with my lines here and I can let the words sort of drop quickly down through the panel here. Just making it up as I go here, placing the words where it seems like they wanna go as they flow through the page. And they're gonna drop us down right here. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm gonna have a picture, I think of like crystal water or spring or something. Let's wait to decide if the crystal spring text is gonna go on this side or that side of this third panel. Let's start drawing our, um, our rain at least. I'm gonna put a border on there. I'm gonna ink that border because I think this, I have an idea for this. Sometimes I like to draw along with the text. Sometimes I draw against the text. You know, if I drew like a cup of tea next to the spring rain, you'd get a sense that maybe I was watching the rain drinking tea or something. Here, I think what I wanna have is atmospheric details. I'm gonna put a heavy cloudy sky here. Wait a minute, that looks like water. <laughs> that looks like water rising over the text. So maybe I need some branches now. Maybe I could color that. I'll just add a couple branches in here. No leaves yet. Maybe I could, maybe I'll add some drops coming down around that text, not through the text, just around it. I'm gonna leave a little space. You'll see, I'll leave a little space all around my text so it's easy to read. And I'll bring the artwork close to it. Oops, let's get those raindrops the right shape here. Scatter some raindrops around the scene. I think this needs to be a real spring shower. Maybe I can, um, maybe I can like do some lines to gray those clouds in. And lots of little lines will make it feel sort of gray and dark and a little stormy there. I was surprised when I wrote this out. I thought I was reading all haikus in this book. Three lines, five syllables, seven syllables, and five syllables. And then I wrote this out and I realized, hey, that's a four-liner. Didn't even notice as I read. I think we need some little dots of rain. I think this should be, this whole panel should be kind of gray. You'll get a sense that these rains have been going on a long time because you have to read across this panel get through all this rain to get on to the next panel. Take the time to put a couple raindrops here and there. Cartooning happens quickly. You get an idea and you throw down some lines and try to capture it. And sometimes from that idea, you end up spending a lot of time adding details in there. Something about taking the time to draw a poem is so relaxing and and I feel like I'm spending time with the poet even longer than the poet spent maybe writing some lines because you sit there with that line reading it again and again figuring out what's going to go in here do I want birds in the branches I've been thinking of birds a lot so maybe I add them in do I want other scenery how many raindrops make for a spring full of rain you get to sort of elaborate on that text, figure out what you what you think about it. That's looking nice and gray and wet. I like that. Now I'm going to come down to this. Now here I'm thinking this panel, we'll put a border right on there to set it off. 
And this panel, this has to be like the ground, the leaves. We have this clean, clean rain coming down. And then it's got to pass through this one panel. This is going to be mucky and dirty, I think. It must have penetrated through the leaves. So let's draw some leaves in there. We have some, some white oak and some red oak. I went out and looked at some leaves just to get some ideas. But you can make up leaves too. I'll just put a bunch of these down here. We're gonna make a real mess here. So let's see, we'll put some maple leaves in. Some beech, any kind of leaf. Oh, and you know what else is in these leaves? I don't think it's just leaves here. You go out and dig through those leaves. There's gonna be more leaves. Maybe there's like some, Earthworms, I'm gonna put an earthworm in there. Crawling around, there we go. Maybe another earthworm over here. Coming back in there, maybe a centipede. I want a centipede crawling through here. or a millipede, whichever it is. Lots of legs. We'll make this kind of the creepy panel here. Creepy, crawly, leafy, rotten leaf mold panel. I think that's what Basho was um, seeing. He said when he wrote this poem, he was looking at mossy stones. He walked around a lot, just writing poems about whatever he saw, whatever he came across. Um, not trying to record like, here's my beautiful stuff from my vacation, but just here's something I saw. I noticed it. I'll put some acorns in here. So I think what he's saying here is he's giving us some contrasts. I'm putting some roots in here whatever comes to mind as you're drawing. And then I'm gonna go in with my marker and make all in between this stuff kind of mucky and dirty with scratchy dots and stuff. Create a, a mucky, dirty, rotten setting. Oh, maybe we should put in some, uh, some raindrops, right? As they go through these leaves, sort of flowing down the page. That'll look really nice. Of course, that's so good for these worms and all the plants. I'm so glad it's raining today. We have needed a lot of rain. We still need more. All right, so there's the raindrops going through and I'll go in and I'll darken around these leaves and that'll make the leaves stand out and the worms and the centipedes and any other bugs we wanna add in there. Now we're getting into this. So this is a contrast. We have these spring rains. We have this mucky, dirty panel where we see all these leaves and the water's washing through them. And then when we get to that last panel, it's gonna be crystal clear. I think that's what Basho was seeing in, that, in those mossy stones. So how can this be? Put some more dirt in here, darken around these drops and these shapes. So I want this panel because I think this, I think the, um, our text here is contrasts. These moldy, rotten leaves and the earthworms. And then we're going to hit a crystal spring. That was his line there. Um, so this next panel, something has to be different here. Something I... I gotta do something to make it look really different from these other panels. These other panels are really busy. We've got a lot of rain coming down. We've got a lot of dirt and speckles and scratches and bugs on this one. So maybe this next panel is totally clean. Um, oh, you know what we can do? We can just 
not ink these borders, leave them totally open. I can still see them so I know where to draw, right? But we'll leave that border totally open there. So that'll feel nice and open. Um, oh, I'm going directly with ink here. So let's see how this works. I'm thinking I'll put in like some rocks and maybe um, on this side of the panel, like a little pool. And I'll just sort of fill it with cartoon water. Oh, maybe for contrast, maybe we're gonna color this ground all black and the water will be all white just for contrast, right? That's the, that's the highest contrast we can have. And I'm thinking as I'm coloring here, who's gonna be standing looking into the spring? Could be a little Basho hiker figure in a robe and with a little walking staff, a little notebook to fill with poems whenever he sees things that remind him of things or things that catch his attention. Like this idea about the rain and the leaves. Quick, write it down in your notebook. Quick, pull out your sketchbook and draw it as a three panel comic. Think of a poet like Basho as a sort of a cartoonist with words. Oh, this looks cool. That is that is high contrast. <laughs> so, oh, look at that. We have the gray clouds across the top, rain coming down. I think I will add a lot more dirt later if there's time in the second panel just to darken it up and emphasize the nice rich soil here that the rain's moving through sort of flows down through and I'll put it, I'll put our little character here. This is where if you wanna do a cat or a monster or anything, you can sort of bring yourself into this. I'm gonna do a little character with a warm robe, maybe with a pack, maybe with a bedroll, maybe not. And I'll do one little hand reaching out with a walking staff. Oh, and the words, let's not forget the words, to feed. Doing my words a little bigger than they need to be, just so it's totally clear to read. To feed. I think I'm going down with these words. Maybe at the end, I'll give a little kick towards the spring. You kind of play with your words and place them creative ways that kind of brings you down and then ends up at the spring. I wonder if we need some, I almost feel like I want to have like some rocks up here on this side and some trees growing up. Maybe this isn't such a simple panel anymore, but maybe some dirt and some leaves and things like a hillside. Oh, there's some leaves on the trees. Must be later in the season already. There we go, we'll hint at that dirt up above because that's where the, the water's washing down through there. We'll put some moss on these rocks. Speckle, speckle that moss in there. Speckle, speckle. And I'm gonna leave that water totally clean, totally clear. <laughs> Feed the crystal spring. Oh, let's let's make sure we credit the poet here. So down here at the bottom, I'll put Basho. And it's translated by um, the translator Nobuyuki Yuasa. So thank you to the translators too when we use poems from other languages that we can't read them in and we are dependent on the translators. It's a whole other job. So we've kind of translated this poem into uh, a, a comic, a visual interpretation of it, what this text means to us, hopefully enriched the text a little, hopefully it comes out, uh, hopefully it comes out <laughs> crystal clear by the end, even though it passes through all this work and all this detail. I'm glad I did this uh, with you in ink. This is kind of fun to not have to go through and ink the idea now. 
to just be able to see it. This is very, uh, there's something very Zen in, um, in inking directly like this. Of course, if I made a mistake and I wanted to fix it, I could take scrap paper and I could trace over something else, cut it out, glue stick it over that, and I could change that character easily. Oh, and let's not forget to sign our own work. Do it here close to the, close to the spring there. Cool, so good luck. If you wanna take a favorite poem of your own, you can try feeding part of it through a simple three panel page, one, two, three, and see how it falls down through the page for you. See what kind of story develops. Um, and I guarantee you, you'll, if you really dig into the poems and really try to figure out what you're getting from the words and what the poet might've meant, I guarantee you'll be surprised by the result. You'll, you'll encounter some creepy crawlies, some beautiful rains, some crystal springs, and who knows what else. I'm gonna go post this over on the Patreon so that um, patrons can see the final version that we live inked right here. We've got a bunch of printables and other things over there, um, as well as notes on each of the live draws. So head on over there, you can join at any level and it's great to have you there, thanks to our patrons. And thanks again to Children's Literacy Foundation for making these live draws possible. We got a little lost in the rain and the leaves there today, but it was really fun to live ink with you. We'll be back again tomorrow with another one. Um, good luck with your comics, everybody. Hey, Renee, good to see you out here. Thanks for joining us. Um, talk to you guys at the next live draw. <laughs>